So we have an electron in uh, a parallel blade capacitor, PP capacitor. It's too much to write parallel blade capacitor, right? And so what is uh, given? Um, electric field. Electric field strength is given. So it's a, uh, what? 20 thousands. Units, Newtons per coulombs. It seems like you remember it now. Then spacing between blades is one millimeter. And electron is released from the negative electrode. So initial velocity of the electron is zero. So it's released. Right. So what happens first um, conceptually with this electron? Since, okay, it is released uh, and of course it is repelled from this negative electrode and attracted by this positive electrode. So it means that, of course, it will start accelerating towards the positive electrode. And sooner or later, of course, it will be, uh, it will reach this positive electrode. So we need to find, I think, a velocity. Yeah, we need to find the speed of the electron uh, when it will be by the negative, by the positive plate. And of course, you need to understand that because sometimes students confuse this uh, they think, okay, uh, when the uh, particle uh, reaches the electrode, it will collide and the final velocity will be zero. No, 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 no. We describe only the uh, motion. Collision, it's a different thing. So pretty much when the problem asks about the final velocity, it means it's, it asks about the velocity just before uh, it hits the positive electrode. Right. Okay, so uh, it will travel this way so this will be our initial point this will be our final point and um, yeah so what needs to be found v and i will write final so that's the problem i think i gave you everything let me check okay sooner or later i will realize what is still missing no, it's good. Everything is... Yeah. I gave you. Okay, so now we need to realize what do we have? Which set of tools do we have to solve this problem? Actually, now we have two uh, equivalently strong approaches. So you can use either approach number one, which we developed uh, what in the past, using... Uh, Newton second, okay, using uh, forces, using electric force, and then we usually combine it with kinematic equations, right, to solve a problem like this. And you solve problems like this in your homework, and also your quiz was some, somewhat about this, right? So that was our uh, previous approach, the force approach, which we already now uh, know how to use. And now we've just developed a new approach. I usually call it uh, as an energy approach because it's it all uh, based on energies. So basically you use what? You use kinetic energy in collaboration with potential energy and under the roof of uh, conservation of mechanical energy. So it's all about energy. So the first approach, it's a force approach, I usually call it based on uh, vector quantities. The second one, the energy approach, which is based on this scalar quantities which we introduced to simplify our life in terms of solving problems. So now we want to apply that. So let me start with the second approach. I would write number two. All right, and I will write energy approach. Sometimes it's a dilemma, right? Let's say you are, you are on the, okay, I remember myself on the exam, right? and you need to solve the problem and you and you know that you can use either this way you can solve it either this way or that way and you're thinking which one will be easier right it's a painful experience to make a decision which approach is easier so that's why quite often uh, i actually write uh, in the problem which approach i want you to use 
so that you wouldn't su you wouldn't be suffering and struggling to make a decision right making decisions here it's painful experience so energy approach first uh, and I actually solve this I will solve actually this problem using both approaches but first with the new one energy approach okay so what uh, this approach is based on what on the fact that energy total mechanical energy of the system is conserved constant it means what it means that if you uh, look at uh, electron at any moment of time or any point uh, as it travels and look at its uh, total mechanical energy it will be the same number and that fact can be used to solve problems for example right we know uh, plenty of information about the uh, system uh, when it is at the initial point and we want to find something at uh, the other point at, for example in this case at the final point so you can uh, compare total mechanical energies of these two points in order to find something which is not known at the final point or uh, you can use any other points right if you if something is unknown uh, in 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 a different point right so that fact that energy is conserved can be used to find to solve the problem to find something which is unknown so let's do it so in this case yeah this is our initial point that is our final point and i will write so total mechanical energy at the initial point equals to the total uh, mechanical energy at the final point so basically that's the beginning of uh, this approach all the time and now from this fundamental uh, statement basically about conservation of mechanical energy we just need to di start diving deeper and deeper and deeper until we'll see the unknown so first step deeper we just need to write it uh, in terms of kinetic and potential energy because there are two types of energies over here so it will be kinetic energy k initial plus u initial equals to k final plus u final Okay, so next step, let's write explicitly uh, formulas for each of these energies. Kinetic energy, usually all students remember, it's one, 1 over 2 mv squared. Okay, I will move to this side, so it will be 1 over 2 m, of course, mass, mass of an electron, mv initial squared. Okay, you know what, let me use not initial, but zero, because that's what, that's how I label it in what is given right then potential energy okay now of course at this point you have to be careful because as i already told you sometimes students just on the final ex on the exams they use just the wrong expression for their own system we have point charge inside of a parallel plate capacitor and we need to use the formula which we were here which was here right which I erased, probably I should have kept uh, the derivation, potential energy of a charge inside of the parallel plate capacitor, which was QE, and we, we had QES, but now I, instead of S, I use X. So it will be QE uh, X uh, initial, All right? And so now on the other side, on the left, on the right hand side, mv okay you know v final i don't use the subscript so i just without subscript mv squared uh, plus qe and x final right so again what i used i used the fact that u equals q e s so that's what i used okay so now let's dump what is zero terms which are zero uh, initial velocity zero because it was released then it was released from the negative electrode right and again you remember that's the uh, place where uh, we have a reference point of our potential energy point where potential energy equals zero so that's why that's why i'm dumping this term because it's a reference point so this is also zero that's our unknown let me emphasize on that and this is d d is given okay so pretty much one unknown one equation basically problem is solved so now let's just solve explicitly for x 
Oh, no, for V, for V. That's our unknown. All right, so let's do it one step at a time. So first I will move um, this term to the other side. So it will be 1 over 2 and v squared equals to minus q e uh, d. And so now I can solve for v. So v equals to square root minus 2 q e d divided by mass of the electrode. Okay, whenever I see something like this, it <laughs> triggers my it triggers my attention immediately. And you, sh you should be able to see why, right? Because I have a square root and minus and the square root. Are we getting uh, imaginary <laughs> things, right? Of course, that shouldn't be uh, because V is normal actual velocity, right? It cannot be imaginary. But we shouldn't actually worry about this minus because we remember that Q, it's a charge of an electron. And of course, charge is negative. So minus uh, of the charge is going to take care of that minus. So, and as a result, minuses will disappear, right? So, but, um, I will, I'm thinking, should I plug numbers? Um, yeah, why not? To, to show that uh, that minus is not going to hurt us. Minus 2, then minus 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Then electric field 2 times 10 to the power of 4. Yeah. Newtons per coulomb. Okay, it's not a good 4. Let me do it this way. Uh, then D, of course, must be in meters. So it's a 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meters. Okay, it's not a good M. And divided by what? Mass. Okay, mass of an electron, I don't remember. I need to look at my notes. 911 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms. Okay. So, square root and the velocity will be equal to, what is the number? 2.7 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. So, that's the speed of the electron when it's about to hit the positive electrode. So, look, it accelerated from zero velocity to, oh my god. It's a 2,700 kilometers per second, right? From zero to 2,700 2, kilometers per second within one millimeter. It's quite an acceleration, right? But again, it's, it's normal for the world of elementary particles. But for our world, of course, it's uh, something uh, which is difficult to imagine. Okay, so that's the energy approach, new one, right? which is based on scalar quantities. Now let's uh, juxtapose, ju let's just also solve uh, the same problem using the force approach, approach which we developed uh, at the very beginning of the semester. So now to compare, let me use approach number one, uh, force approach. Right. Which is based on, of course, using forces acting on, in this case, on the charge. And uh, Newton's second law, and then, yeah, if everything is correct, everything, not, not if everything is um, right, we can use kinematic equations. So let me, uh, you know what, what I just look at the picture, and you know, something is missing, right, in order to. Okay, something is missing. I just, now I realized what is missing. I didn't draw electric field lines. It's not a crime, it's not a big deal, right? But the picture looks better. So, let me draw electric field lines. Okay. So, now it doesn't look some partially empty. So, the force approach, of course, will be based on uh, forces and Newton's second law. 
Right, so I'm going to combine. So, of course, first, electric force, it's a Q times T, right? And I want to show all the minuses and all the minuses explicitly, because now it's a force approach. We're dealing with vectors, so we have to be careful uh, with those um, vector quantities. So first of all, I want to show explicitly that our electron is a negatively charged particle. So I put this minus in front, and now it's an absolute value of the charge of an electron. So, right? Then electric field. Relative to our coordinate system, electric field points that way, negative x direction. Let me show also that uh, minus. So it will be, um, which way I wrote, just a second. Ah, just like this. E, okay, you know what, let me remove this parenthesis. So it will be E times minus i hat direction. So that's the electric field. So now we have minus here, minus there. As a result, uh, our force is going to be positive as it should be because the force points that way. Repulsion from the negative electrode and attraction to, to the positive one. So it will be uh, Q E and in the positive X direction. Now, next step, of course, is Newton's second law to get an acceleration. Right. Uh, so F yeah whatever uh, m equals to mass times acceleration so as a result uh, we can get uh, information about acceleration so acceleration will be equal to what uh, q e divided by m and in the positive x direction so acceleration is positive so object accelerates not decelerates so uh, the next step, and of course, acceleration is constant. So since acceleration is constant, so we can legitimately use kinematic equations. One of those three. Right. Uh, in this case, we don't have information about time. And the question is not about finding travel time. So usually it's a, a clear indication that uh, equation number three, no time equation will be the most convenient equation. Again, you can still use equation for V and equation for X, but in that case, you'll have to make some extra steps in order to solve this problem. So in this case, our kinematic equations number three will be the best, is the best. So I can write, so V squared equals to uh, V uh, not squared plus two A and X uh, final minus X initial, basically delta X. So I wrote explicitly as the difference between the final position and the initial position. So now let's dump a few uh, terms which are zeros. Initial velocity is zero. This is zero. Then initial position. Again, we start uh, at the origin. So this is zero. And x final is d. So now we need to solve for v and plug this acceleration. Of course, just absolute value of acceleration. Right? So this will give us V equals square root of 2 A, it's a Q, then E, mass goes downstairs, um, and times D, right? I think I didn't forget anything yet, that's it. We can close our square root sign, and what are we getting? Exactly the same. Okay, here, here the minus, but of course I can uh, get rid of that minus by uh, showing explicitly the minus of the negatively charged electron, right? So basically this and that exactly the same. So uh, in this case, yeah, both approaches reasonably, okay, not reasonably, both approaches easy. You know what, let me first write, so the same here, conclusion happy face right so in this case i cannot say that our energy approach is easier than the first force approach or force approach is a day equally easy in this case right but of course there are situations where uh energy approach is definitely easier